How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another build. So in this video, I'm gonna be working on a church, but it's not a normal church. Now this one is for Halloween, obviously. So that means we have to make it a little spooky, but I'm very excited about this one because it's going to be one of the largest structures that I have ever built. But let me go ahead and show you the plans just so you have an idea of what I have in mind. So this is the pretty generalized sketch that I have of the church so far. I drew it to scale in order to get the proportions right, but it's basically gonna consist of two sections on either side, and then a middle door section that juts out around two feet, and then a steeple that rises to around 20 feet in the middle of all of that. But this is basically what it's going to end up looking like, minus the paint and aging and everything else that makes it look like a church. But I'll go ahead and show you what I have built so far. All right, so I have two of the flats set up together. This one right here is the window on the left side. There's gonna be the other one on the right side, but I went ahead and framed out the arched window. And it's connected to this other flat. And this is jutting out around two feet and that's because we're gonna have the middle section right here with the doorway. And then that's gonna connect up to this, but just on the other side. Um, and right now it's pretty sturdy. Um, I wanted it going all the way back because it's gonna support the steeple as well. Um, but eventually I'm gonna have some bolts like at the top, middle, and then bottom. And that should hopefully hold it together pretty well. Uh, we'll see what happens when it gets out outside on uneven ground. Um, that's another thing I'll have to figure out. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and test it, set up some of the pieces. I just finished this top gable. And this is the middle portion of the church. So I also framed out the door. So there'll be a door in there. And that's the left side window. And then the other side will be on this side. But this is what it's looking like so far. This section up here will have a transom window, the top arch. Um, so these are two separate sections and that'll help with storage. Alrighty, so I've got a lot of it set up now because I'm starting to drill the holes for the bolts to hold everything together. Right now it's being held together by screws. I know it's a little hard to see because it's just the shell of the structure. But now that I'm setting it up, I realize some of the measurements are off. Um, but that's why we set it up before we finish it. But yeah, I think I may start on either the siding or the, the roof. And then I'll have to make the rest of the steeple. And that'll go all the way up into the sky. Thanks for the help. So I finished making the roof sections. This one is one of the smaller sides to the middle gable. As you can see, this is what it would look like angled up. And this notch right here is where the steeple comes straight up through. And that'll make a little more sense once I set it up. But then I also have this bigger side over here. And this is for one of the longer sides that lead up to the steeple. And the reason it has this big notch in it is because there's a tree that comes up right about there and the roof will basically come around and then angle back up to here where the, where the steeple aligns with that. But it'll make more sense once I set it up. I'm still debating what I wanna use for the roof itself but I'll let you guys know once I figured that out. I also began work on the next section of the steeple. And this is going to be on top of the four foot wide section. This one is three foot wide by four feet tall. And I'm trying to make it as lightweight as possible since it's going to be up higher and I'm gonna to have to climb a ladder to put it up there. But it's made out of one by twos and then the entire outside will be made out of foam. And I'm still figuring out how I wanna do the siding for it. I may carve into it. Um, 
but these windows will have kind of like louver sections so it looked like a, a vent um, and then the next section will sit on top of that and that'll be the angled roof Alrighty, so this is what I've got for the roof section so far. I used a larger two inch piece of foam for the base and glued some one by threes onto that. That can then be bolted into this bottom section. And then for the rest of the roof, I used this half inch insulation board and I haven't glued this section on yet, but you can see it's two different pieces. We've got this steeper middle piece and then the less steep bottom piece. And then they'll all be glued together into one larger roof. I still gotta add the cross at the top. And then I'm also gonna probably carve the shingles into it as well. I finished making the cross for the top of the steeple with a couple one by two screwed together. And I also finished the ridge line for the roof. And for the gaps, I used spray foam and I'm gonna let it expand and dry so that I can then carve it away and create a nice edge along the ridge. But for the majority of this, I use a combination of liquid nails and spray foam, and that seems to help glue all the foam together. And then while it's drying, I'll use toothpicks just to hold everything together. And that seems to be working pretty good. But next, I'm gonna try carving some shingles into this. So this is what I'm thinking for the shingles. I tested it on the back side because no one's really gonna see that. But I traced out with just a permanent marker some shingle shapes and then used a wire brush to carve, carve them out. So I'll go ahead and show you that on the other sides. So I've traced out some of the shapes I'm gonna go with for the shingles. And I've got this toothbrush, wire brush thing that I'm then gonna drag along into different spots and basically carve out the shingles. Now, that was very rough. I think what I'm gonna do after I carve them all out is then I'm gonna take some sandpaper and smooth out some of the edges so it looks a little better. But I'll go ahead and fast forward and show you the whole process. So I've been using this Dremel with the sander bit in order to smooth out the edges where the excess spray foam was and also age it a little bit. Same with down here. I used the Dremel and kind of carved out some different areas, make it look more like aged wood. And then I took the wire brush again and carved out these different sections to make it look like siding and then also age the edges and roughen them up to make them look a little more like wood. But yeah, it's looking less like a fairy tale castle, more like a wooden structure. But yeah, time to do the siding for the rest of it. So I'm about to cut the siding with this quarter inch Luon. And man, it would it be a lot easier if I had a table saw, but I'm gonna be using a jigsaw to cut it I'm cutting them six inches and they're going to overlap half an inch once I put them on the wall. But yeah, maybe the jigsaw will make it look a little bit older with my jagged cutting. But yeah, here we go. So it's actually turning out to be pretty easy to attach all this siding and it's looking pretty good. So that's exciting. Get it? Exciting. Well, anyways, I'll show you how I am attaching it. I'm just taking some wood glue and it's overlapping about a half inch and I'll take the pieces, let me switch hands real quick. I'll take the pieces and I'll align them up with the little marks I made, put them on the wood glue and I'll take the nail gun with one inch nails in there and put four nails into it and it holds great. The wood glue helps with the seam down here, and that keeps it all nice and together. Also, I forgot to say that I did add these one by twos 
in certain places so that I can actually nail the siding onto it. And that's because I'm gonna have molding around this window and it sticks out from where the original one by four is. And there is a one by three on the edge of this. So in places I can't actually nail it into the original one by four, I have to add the one by twos. Um, but that works just fine so far. I finished the siding for this one panel and I left the gap up here because I'm gonna have the other siding attached to the next piece so that I don't have any seams and it just overlaps. But I also cut out the foam molding for the window and added a two by four down here for the bottom sill and glued that on with liquid nails. Probably the hardest thing about this was cutting this angle for the siding so that it lines up with the window. But it was overall pretty easy to put all the siding on. So I have parts of the walls set up so that I can add some of these one by threes on the corners in order to then butt up the siding to it. And I do have this one sitting back here. That's not gonna be there. But with this one, I do wish that I added one on the side of the window um, because now I have a gap from where the siding sticks out. And I can add a, a little piece of blue on. No one's ever gonna see it, but I know it's there. So I may add a piece of blue on behind it so that there is no gap. But if I was to do it again, I would add a one by three onto this wall, similar to that, but just on that side. So I attached this door. This was one of my old doors to my room when I was a kid. And the reason you can tell is because of all these stickers that are on the back. And I think I'll leave them here just for memory's sake. But I'm gonna eventually add some trim on the front. And then we also have a old door handle that I'll put on there. And maybe even an old door knocker as well. But yeah, it swings very nicely and opens inward so that if people are walking by, it doesn't smack them in the face. Yeah, we don't want a lawsuit. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> I finished the siding on these jut out sections for the left and right side. And then that just leaves the front section for the siding and trim. And that'll be all that can fit in the garage for now, at least standing up. I'll have to move things out. I just finished the bottom middle section. I still have to do the top part with the arched transom. But for this, I used one by fours around the door casing to make it a little more grand. And then the same siding on either side. But yeah, now time to do the top portion. I have both sections laid out next to each other now, and I just finished this top part. I used the same method as the other windows for the, this transom with the foam in between in order to give it some depth. And then I also made this Luan overlap here so that there's virtually no seam. If I can get it back in, there we go. Virtually no seam except for this one by three. So I think that turned out very well. But I'm going to go ahead and set it up and see it all together so far so I can get the rest of the measurements right. All right, so this is what it looks like set up so far. I've been working on the steeple and this front gable roof. I can show you that I skinned the steeple with some more of the Luan for the siding and added the crown molding at the top. I still haven't done the sides yet, so they're not up. But for the roof, you can kind of see, I added a one by three and a bolt to hold it into this front part right here. And I'll go ahead and show you the back as well because I added some pieces back there. So for the back, I added these two one by threes going up at this angle here. And then that helps bolt in to the roof as well. So that stabilizes the steeple and the roof. And it'll be a similar concept for the roof on, along this for these two side steeples. 
but I'll show you that in a second once I finish those. Well, a second for you, a couple hours for me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, Florida. Just as I was getting into working. I'm working on the roof pieces now. I'm using the same method as everything else with the siding. And then I'm using all my scrap siding pieces and gluing them on with either wood glue. Now I'm using liquid nails because I ran out of wood glue. But that gives it the illusion that I have a bunch of shingles on here when it's really just a couple glued on top of the siding. I'm probably gonna paint them some different variants of brown just to complete that look. But yeah, turn siding into shingles. Who would have known? Alrighty, so this is what the finished roof section looks like up on one of the sides. And I also added a couple one by threes in there just to cover the gaps. And for the side back here, I still haven't added it, but I'm gonna have a piece of Luan sitting up in there just to cover that gap. But yeah, this is the general idea of what it's gonna be like. Still need to do the other side. I've also got my helper out here. This is Lincoln, say hello. Alrighty, so I just finished the two larger roofs. As you can see, I made it look like it kind of cuts around the tree there. And the illusion that it's going back further, but it'll be dark, so you really won't be able to see it anyways. But then I'm gonna make two side walls here that kind of look like it's broken away as well. And it's crazy how much the roofs make it look more three-dimensional. Hopefully these walls on the side will do the same. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do this before it starts raining, but I just finished the two side walls and I bolted them in to the back of the other wall here. And I cut all this siding so that it looks like it breaks away and it covers the tree a bit makes it look like the church goes back a little more than it does. And I also made this siding go upside down, but hey, that's an Easter egg. And it'll be dark, no one will see it. All right, so I've got the steeple up here. This is the first time I'm seeing it on top of this bottom portion. And it's very tall. You can only imagine what it's gonna be like on top of the rest of the church but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna attach like a roof that goes up to where the bottom of this trim is all the way around the steeple and that'll help finish the look for that but what I did is I added a couple of these one by fours here and then bolted them into the bottom portion of the steeple and then bolted the top portion of the steeple into that I also think I'm gonna add a brace here and put a eye bolt or something so I can then attach a rope and put it on a pulley so that we can basically hoist up this entire thing on top of the church. So that'll definitely be one of the most challenging parts about this. But yeah, I'll go ahead and show you how I make the roof. Okay, so I just finished this little roof that leads up to the next section of the steeple. I took it down so I could finish it, but I cut a seam right here because these are two separate sections and they'll come apart nicely and then in the back in order to support it I added these foam pieces all around it in order to give it some support you can kind of see it in there and then I spray foamed in order to glue it even better all right one last thing before I put up the whole steeple on the church I added these louver vent things to finish off the window look and they're inch and a half strips of the foam and I broke some away so it looks like I don't know they're broken away it's old but I think that really completes the whole look of the steeple alrighty so I've got steeple put together I broke a few louvers on the side while trying to put it up there, but we eventually figured it out. We used a couple ropes, basically pulled it up upside down and then pivoted it 
into place with another rope and that seemed to work pretty well. All that's left is the windows and I'm gonna do that next. But yeah, the whole thing is put together. It was a lot shorter on paper. So yeah, it's very tall. But I think this will definitely help finish off this side of the yard. Alrighty, I just finished making the windows and it's all out of foam. Just cut it out with the jigsaw. And I'm eventually gonna put either some plastic or plexiglass behind it and paint it white so it looks opaque. And you can't really see through it and then we'll backlight it once we do all the lighting and that'll look pretty cool. But yeah, this is pretty much all I'm gonna do for this video. I still have to do the trim for the door and the door handles and whatnot to make it look a little more aged and broken apart. But in the next video, I'm going to paint it. So we're going to have to take it all down and paint it and then put it all back up. So yeah, that video will be up pretty soon, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Go ahead and like and follow us on our Facebook, Haunt for ATP. And if you like this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. But yeah, happy Halloween, happy haunting. We'll see you guys next time.